going to New York. Going to New We're York. We're going back to my hometown. We're going to be in New York City, and we will be there for eight days. It'll be great. Yeah. Very good. We always have I've fun. I've always wanted to go to New York in Christmas time. It's a great city. It looks amazing. I love Fair. New York, but I've never been yeah. there at Christmas. It's beautiful. I want to go. Yeah. Yeah, Hopefully it snows this year. We're staying in Midtown and going to do all the touristy things. We're going to see a show. We're looking for that right now. It'll just be a wonderful time. Very nice. So, yeah. Good. Be fun. Okay, I'm going to ask the real questions now. Are okay. we on? We will be on. Yes. yes. Oh. So <laughs> just make sure to reiterate my question and your answer. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your favorite part of the holiday season? Being with family and the people we love. Celebrating all our blessings, you know, being together and just gratefulness. That's Christmas to me. And I would agree. You know, the holidays are just such a joyous time and it's, it's a time to be thankful. It's a time to be with friends. So th that's the best part. It's just such a special feeling when, when the holidays arrive. Yes, I agree. Uh, what do the holidays mean to you? <laughs> well, well, what do the holidays mean? I know we're <laughs> what are the holidays? I'm uh, looking to you first, so, uh, but, well, the holidays, uh, the holidays to me mean a time of happiness and joy and friendship and a time to be with family. It's just a different feeling from, from being in the job to, to being with friends. It's just such a spiritual time as well. So that's, that's what it means to me. And that kind of should be, I, I believe every day should be like Christmas. I mean, it just seems like everyone's happier, everyone's more festive. Just a wonderful time. I love the holidays. <laughs> Always did. Right, your house feels like Christmas. Thank it's you. A nice, yeah. It's a nice feeling. Thank you so much. Thank you. Vicki does such a great job with she this does. house. <laughs> no matter what the season, it's, it's a constant <laughs> it's <constantly> holiday. It's changing. <laughs> I love that. That's the way yeah. it should be. It's probably going to be great for your son, too. He'll oh, he so loves it. Memories. Yeah, from a little baby to now, the same things are up, and he just comes home and lights up every day. Uh, what does Hogue mean to you? Well, Hogue is a special place. So when we came from New York uh, 12 years ago, we were looking for a great community to live in. And we looked at the schools, and we looked at the quality of life, but one of the things we did look at was what kind of hospital was in the community. And uh, we had heard about Hogue and knew Hogue from others, but uh, uh, over the years, Hogue has become a super special place. It's a place where w it's comforting to know that Hogue is there for us and for friends and for the community. So it is just a, uh, it's just a great part of the fabric of our community. And for me, without getting emotional, which I will, but it's part of what, who I am. It's, they were wonderful to my mother when she was alive. And um, I'll never forget it. The nurses, the doctors, the staff were amazing. And she was so grateful. And she was an angel. And I love nursing. That was my background. I was a nurse many moons ago. But, and it'll always be a love of my life, nursing. And I love Hogue and will always give. Always. Yeah, and Hogue is a great sense of pride for both of us. I can say that uh, I've met so many people who have uh, been treated at Hogue or had family treated at Hogue, and always the comments are that it is an incredible place. Mm -hmm. From the doctors to the nurses to the way they were greeted, um, it just is a special place. And we had a family friend there last week, and it was another case where we just receive such accolades. So it's great to be involved with such a great hospital. Uh, and you sort of answered this in your last question, but if you can kind of elaborate, um, how has Hogue affected you and your family? Well, uh, Hogue has affected our family, um, as Vicki had mentioned, uh, through her mother, who was uh, quite ill and elderly and frail, and was in the hospital a number of times. and. Every time she received such great treatment, it was just a wonderful, wonderful place. It was a place where uh, she received comfort, we received comfort, she received incredible medical care. The nursing staff was simply fabulous. Um, so that was a direct uh, situation, but it's been many, many friends who have been there. And even our son who had a, uh, who had a fall and a, and a break. And, 
when he went to Hogue, it was a place where we knew things would really turn out right. And he was com comforted there, we were, and of course he was treated superbly uh, while he was at Hogue. So it's very nurturing, very nurturing hospital, very loving. And I also believe the ER, without the staff that they had and the doctors, my mother would not have lived as long because of their care and their loving, loving ways. You know, the nurses, everybody. What's your holiday wish for Hope? Well, my holiday wish for Hogue is that uh, we get through the uh, affiliation with St. Joe's in, in grand style and that we remain the fabulous hospital that we are today. And I know that will happen because sitting on both boards, uh, I've seen the thought uh, that has been put into this affiliation, both from the executive staff, the administration of the hospital through both boards. So uh, I know it's going to work wonderfully. It'll be something that will help our community. But uh, my wish is that it, it goes through uh, fluidly and we continue seamlessly to be such a great hospital. That we continue to flourish as the greatest hospital, I believe, certainly in Orange County. Probably, I'd say all the US. <laughs> I would say that, hands down. What is your favorite Christmas Carol Ball memory? <laughs> we, have, we have a few of them. I think last year, Dancing with the Band Leader. <laughs> that was just a gas. And just being with friends, and we're, we are usually the last to leave, aren't we? Well, that, that's kind of my <laughs> memory. <laughs> it seems every year we're the last to leave. I yeah. remember leaving, uh, probably was last year, the year before, with Dr. Dobkin and his wife, uh, Danya. And, um, Fortunately, we had a driver, and we went for another cocktail afterwards, but it was a late <laughs> night for us, unusually late night, yeah. but we had just such a great time. Uh, it, it's such, just such a fun place to be, and my wife is a superb dancer, so it was great to be dancing with her into the uh, wee hours and, uh, and, and then even beyond. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> uh, what is your hope for the ball this year? that everybody has as great a time as we always do. We always hope that our guests and everybody there enjoys as much as we do, as we have a blast. I think our hope for the ball this year is that we make lots of and money. I was gonna add that, but <laughs> that I don't, it, sure. That we, that we are successful, that people have as great a time as they've had in the past, and that our guests uh, enjoy it just as much as our guests have over the last number of years. Last thing is just to sign out with some sort of holiday, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, something. <laughs> it tends to me. <clears throat> well, just God bless everybody and may their families and, and their loved ones be healthy, happy, and above all grateful for the world we live in and what we have. Well, we want to wish a happy holiday to all of the staff, the nurses in particular at our great hospital, but the entire community and all those that are here this evening uh, enjoying this great ball. So we want to wish everyone a happy and joyous holiday season. Fantastic. We did good? You did great. Yeah. Thank yes. you. Super. Okay. Thank you. I was going to ask you a couple, like, warm-up questions, and then, and then we're going to go. And then the real? And then the real. Um, but I just look at me, up. and okay. then as much as you can, reiterate what I've said to you, um, so that way it's in context, basically. So, you know, what's your favorite color? You would say my favorite color is blue. Okay. All right. So, uh, what did you do for Thanksgiving? We um, had dinner with family, so. Did yeah. you cook? No, thankfully yeah. I didn't. Yeah. Because you were on call, right? Yeah. Yeah. That would have been horrible. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've done that before. I won't make that mistake again, <laughs> being on call and cooking. Sounds like a terrible plan. Yeah. Um, what are your plans for Christmas? Um, I'm actually off for Christmas, so I'm excited about that. So um, having the whole family over, extended family, cousins, aunts, uncles, so Great. it'll be fun. Uh, okay, so what is, um, what do the holidays mean to you? The holidays are a special time. Um, obviously the meaning of Christmas and stuff is important to us. Um, just realizing um, the importance of that and just getting together with family and friends and, and just enjoying those relationships. 
Uh, what does Hogue mean to you? Hogue is a special place. I mean, obviously, it's the only hospital that um, I've worked at after my training and stuff. But um, it's a special place because I've developed long-term relationships here with my patients, with colleagues. And it's really, um, it's constantly changing and evolving, but it's, it's a neat thing to be a part of. And what do Hogue donors mean to you? Hogue donors, um, over the years, I've really um, realized how important philanthropy is, especially at the hospital and on a hospital level. Because with all of the changes in medicine and with not knowing where things are going to go, it really makes philanthropy even that much more important. So Hogue being able to do what it does best and being able to provide the quality that we do, um, we really need our donors to be able to help support us to do that. And how long have you been involved with Hogue and how have you seen it change over the years? Well, I've been with the hospital for over 15 years. I think in women's services, obviously the biggest change would be the building of our women's pavilion. Um, the Sue and Bill Gross um, pavilion really um, was a monumental change for women's health services in that state-of-the-art facility that we get to practice in now and, um, and all of the programs and things that we get to help develop within that structure is um, really exciting to be a part of. And how would you like to see Hogue grow in the future? Well, I think a lot of the changes that Hogue is already doing um, are really exciting, extending out into the urgent care centers and really um, being a part of this whole um, continuum of care is really the part that makes it so exciting. So being able to pull all the pieces together as a women's health specialist, you always focus on like the woman and you follow her throughout her entire lifetime. So I've always been able to see women at different stages of their life and to be a part of those special stages. And now with all of the development that's going on at Hogue, I'm able to continue to be a part of all of that and to reach out into their outpatient setting and in urgent care and just tying all that information together to provide better quality care for women throughout their lifetime. That's great. Um, what is your holiday wish for Hogue? Oh, that's a good question. My holiday wish for Hogue, um, I guess, is to not change, to continue the way we are and to continue to evolve and, and try to provide the best care that we possibly can to our community. What is your favorite Christmas Carol Ball memory? My favorite Christmas Carol Ball memory? Um, probably, I would say, um, hmm. That's a hard one because there's so many. Um, I think it was giving Sandy Simon the Swarovski crystal covered um, stethoscope. That's my favorite memory. Um, how has Hogue affected you and your family? Well, um, Hogue has been a place where my family has come for care. Um, it's. Uh, Last year, actually, right after the Christmas Carol Ball, my mom was admitted to the hospital and, and spent a prolonged period of time there. So um, I got to see firsthand what it was like to be on the other side and um, the amazing care that was provided to her. So um, I just, uh, you know, it's been an integral part of our lives. I mean, my boys know when mom's not home, she's usually at Hogue. <laughs> And then the last thing is just to do a holiday sign out, like Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays or whatever you want to do to sign out. Um, I'm wishing everybody a Merry Christmas and a blessed New Year. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. That was easy. Plans for the holidays. Um, it's a moving target at the moment because, again, um, Jilly will be back the day before. So it's, again, it's Jilly's. So we've got everything ready. She will probably be very tired because she's been away for three months. So we'll be most likely at Jilly's, uh, my daughter's uh, place in Los Angeles. And usually for us, Christmas and Thanksgiving is, is just because it's Jilly's time because we hardly get time to see her. So if she wants to invite any of her cousins, she will, and, but we're going to be in Los Angeles. Very nice. Uh, what is your favorite part of the holiday season? Um, Actually, see, I, I'm not a Christian, but to me, Christmas became important when we went to England in 76. So Christmas time is always fun. It is such joyous time. 
um, uh, in England, uh, Christmas is everywhere. Uh, I mean, in the hospital, in, in shops, everybody is happy, food everywhere, Christmas carols in the streets, people will stand, just start singing. And I've been, I remember going to Westminster Abbey and if, you know, it's one of the most acoustically perfect church and listening to Christmas carols. So just kids will come stand and start singing. So to me, Christmas time, it's not so much about religion as about happiness, joy. I mean, the decorations, the, um, Jilly used to decorate it and then, and, and. so to me, it's a very happy occasion and um, everything about Christmas is nothing but pure joy. And I love it. Yeah. Uh, what do the holidays mean to you? Family, uh, friends, but most important, family. I miss my daughter. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Cut it. Cut it. So that's what, what it is. It's got to be hard. She's very hard. Very hard. Gallivanting everywhere. I'm sure she misses us too. Stuff. Cut it, too. don't. <laughs> yeah, that's about family. Yeah. yeah. Um, what does hope mean to you? <coughs> um, I don't know what heaven is, but I have a rough idea. I think it's uh, being a doctor in Hogue. I've been blessed and I've really been very happy here. Everything that a doctor could do, I have. And I'm very happy in what I'm doing now, running the Diabetes Center and the Hog Medical Group. But um, I have had um, more fun enjoying my life in the last 26 years than the previous 42 years. Um, I would say the day I saw my wife, the day my baby was born, and uh, when I, what I have done in the last few years. So Hog is. Um, means a lot after my wife and my daughter. You've been with Hope for a long time. How have you seen it change throughout the years? Um, I would say no change. The core values have not changed. Uh, external market forces, uh, political changes, to me, don't matter much to uh, me, but the values that uh, we cherish about uh, respect, service, uh, and uh, uh, giving yourself more than to others than to yourself, those have remained. And, and it attracts people who continue to give, continue to have loyalty. The loyalty that people have for hope is fierce. It is not something that can be measured. It's not something that can be explained. Um, it's a very horizontal organization. It's not a vertical organization. So um, I do not see Hogue having changed uh, at all from its core value. The rest of them, we adapt. It's very adaptable. Um, Hogue is very quiet. It does not speak about itself much. Maybe within, even within we don't. We just assume that we have to do good. So, personally speaking, Hogue has not changed from the values that I think are very important. Uh, because of that strong willingness and desire to do the right thing, Hogue has um, remained successful. And it will be always successful because it will not deviate from those values, and those are very, very important values. I would probably classify you as a dreamer, just for what you've, mm -hmm. um, just the Diabetes Center and what you've envisioned and, and how that's come about. What are your future dreams for now? Can you take five minutes? I had to wipe my tears. Sorry, <laughs> this is about crying. I have no shame about talking about my family, so that's, it's just for the camera that I wipe my tears. Um, Yes, I have I been a dreamer? Yes, I'm, I'm a dreamer. Do I continue to dream? Absolutely. Uh, the only um, uh, concern, it's not a concern, the only drawback to where I am is 
I'm not getting younger, I'm getting older. I wish I was 35 and there's so much to be done and there's, there are so many opportunities that Ho gives to people who are ready to give themselves. So I'd like to see uh, diabetes being uh, taken seriously and I know uh, there are people who are interested in doing this so I would like to develop a community-wide Orange County-wide um, diabetes care program where everybody is taken care of scientifically, um, rich, poor, black, white, people of different culture. Uh, diabetes should be taken seriously and I hope I'll be able to play a part in creating such a huge community-wide um, standardized best practice uh, so that People will not get diabetes, and if they get diabetes, they will not lose their eyes, kidneys, and feet. I hope. And then I'm also helping the hospital in developing a primary care group, and I hope that will set standards for care in the community, in the population. We have selected some very fine doctors to help us do that. And uh, I hope that medical group is considered as one of the best, if not in Orange County, if not in the state, in the country. Because we're developing to uh, take care of people and not to employ doctors. So it's not about the doctors, it's about what we have to do. I hope we will grow bigger and, and provide care to some of our most needy people. I still remember the first general staff meeting I attended in August 1986. I joined the 1st of July 1986. And I was at this general staff meeting with some of the most prominent Hoke doctors. I was very blessed. I, right from the first day, I was involved with giants of Hoke Hospital like Dr. Richard Harano, Dr. James Shelburne, Dr. Joel Manchester, Dr. Don Williams. They were my, my friends, I mean, they adopted me. And I looked at that meeting and I said to them, I said, I want to be there one day as the chief of staff. So I remember all of them telling me, we'll watch you, we'll help you get there, but show us that you can. And uh, they meant every word of it and they did help me to be able to learn and grow. And, so I said Hogue has not changed, and to me Hogue still is the same as it was, a warm, uh, vibrant, very quiet, uh, very self-effacing, and giving opportunities to anybody and everybody who wants to contribute. So the difference is um, many young doctors, hospitalists, intensivists, neurohospitalists, gastro gastroenterologists, being able to provide care to the patients when they need it rather than waiting for the doctors to arrive. So that's a big change. Um, and very importantly, the medical staff embraced all this. Oftentimes, medical staff would do things which would uh, be almost at the expense of their income. But if you tell this medical staff this is what is best for your patients, they would not only support it, they will make it successful. Some of the things that medical staff have implemented in this hospital, way before any other hospital in Orange County, hospitalists, intensivists, diabetes program, uh, door to cat uh, balloon timing. And I remember it was all geared and directed by medical staff leaders. And I still go to meetings occasionally with the other med departments. It's amazing how these people have come together at their time where they could be with their families or they could be um, seeing patients, giving up all that just to make a difference. So um, I've seen the difference in terms of what we provide to our patients, but I continue to be amazed by the strong, high-quality caliber 
of doctors. As a community hospital, we have remarkable things to our credit. We don't talk about them much. As I said, we do not talk about them. So I'm, people came from Jocelyn to meet with me yesterday. We have more number of patients with gestational diabetes, the UBROT program for women and children, for women with pregnancy and diabetes. Some of the things that we do, rest of the community hospitals don't even do. But then we continue to do more and better. So the changes are that continued support of the community, philanthropy, continued enthusiasm of the doctors. So it continues to provide the best care. Can we do better? Sure. Can we do more? Sure. Uh, can we do it with better cost? Sure. But they will happen. And we will continue to be a big name to reckon with. Tell me about your favorite Christmas carols all You know, I'm a very shy person. You may not believe this, but I'm very shy, actually. I think I cover up by talking and lo speaking loudly. Uh, all of them have been fabulous. That's one time when I see my wife at her best. Um, so every Christmas carol ball, I have the photographs of every one of them. So um, all of them, because um, she looks at her best. So to me, that every carol ball is. I look forward to it, not because I want to dance, because I don't, um, I, not because uh, um, I have a lot to drink, but I don't drink that much anymore. Just to be with her and, and her beautiful self. She's the sweetest ever. <laughs> um, what is your hope for the ball this year? I mean, Angie came and told me that there's going to be a different style of promoting and um, getting people to give more. Um, she didn't give me much time, by the way. She, but then Angie's very smart. And, and so the idea that there will be opportunities for many more people to give to many more um, areas of uh, uh, clinical activities that Hope is good at. Um, it's different, isn't it? I mean, everywhere there is silent auction or there's loud auction. What's new? So um, initially I was not so sure uh, how it's going to work out because I had a different concept after you explained to me. I think uh, and the way we can appeal to people of various interests. Not everybody wants to give um, to diabetes center. But if we say, look, one child costs us $375, give us whatever you can so that we can support. I mean, we are, we are supporting the diabetes center to the tune of $600,000 from our operating revenue. So if we can reduce that burden to the hospital, they can spend it on some other equipment if people can. Um, but it gives an opportunity to prevent diabetes in mothers who were diabetic during pregnancy because they are going to become diabetic. But we know how to prevent diabetes. But if only we have the tools and methods and hence the finances to detect early and counsel them. Little Latino children who are going to become diabetics, if we can prevent them and the little children teach their mothers and learn how to eat better, how to exercise, and it costs us to do that. We're doing it at the moment. So help will come in the way. Um, so I think some of those uh, for the young children, for pregnant mothers, for people of different culture, which is a barrier for diabetes education, if we can inculcate them. What we're trying to do, if you think about this, the theme that we have tried to give you is how to get those young children grow up and have good babies. How to prevent those people who are going to be susceptible, educate them not to get diabetes. How to prevent mothers who will become diabetics at a very young age. So, our, so I think those are the different things I'm excited about. I mean, it's a public health menace. It's a public health issue. It cannot be taken care of in the doctor's office at the diabetes center. It has to be taken care of by the community.
It's a, it's a chronic health condition is a community issue. So it's an opportunity and uh, we ask people to have, who will not love children, who will not have pregnant, love pregnant mothers, who will not love little children who need help. So I think that's a difference. So I'm really excited about that. So last thing, mm -hmm. um, just signing off with a holiday message like Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, something that you want to say to everybody in attendance at the ball. Enjoy yourself. Life is really fun. And um, try it. Smile and it make, becomes easier. It really does. Live happily. It's, it's far easier to be happy than be sad and angry. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so I don't want any... It's okay. That sounds like fun. Uh, what is your favorite part of the holiday season? My favorite part of the holiday season is just spending time with family. I, I just, as the kids are getting older, and, and by the way, my, my fifth grader, Landon, this is the first year finally that Santa Claus is gone. No more Santa Claus. So he, it took him a little while. He, you know, he likes the magic. He didn't want to believe what some of his friends were starting to tell him. So it used to be the excitement of, of playing Santa Claus, but now that will be gone this year for the first time. So it's just fun to, to be with the family yeah. and, and see their excitement and, and, and just really talk about the meaning. We get so commercialized and we're as guilty as anybody else with it, but we really like to sit down and talk a little bit more about the meaning and, and try to reach out to other people who may not be as fortunate. Mm -hmm. so. so is he sad when he realizes he He, yes, and he keeps coming back just trying to reiterate, are, we, are you sure? And then he goes back to prior Christmases and says, well then how did this happen if there's not a Santa Claus? And how did this happen? And I just said, I'm just so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cute. Hogue, you know, Hogue's about care. So I've, I've been at a lot of hospitals throughout my career and, and worked at some big academic medical centers and they did great things there and they were into amazing discoveries but the care wasn't there and Hogue to me is, is really about care. When I sit in senior management team meetings, we're focused on care. We're really focused on taking care of people and then that's, you know, I, I have the shortest tenure I'm sure of, of most of the people you're you're uh, videotaping, but uh, I, I've seen that. I, I've seen that early on, and it's still there. And, and, it, and it's about doing the right thing. You'll hear Dr. Fable often even use that term, that phrase, we're going to do the right thing. So I think that's what it's about. Uh, how has Hogue affected you or your family? Well, it's, uh, how has Hogue affected me or my family, or me and my family? It, it's interesting because we're not only, I'm not only working here, but we're consumers as well. So, so we get to see things from, from both sides. And it's just, it, it's, it's a family. It, it's a big institution. It's a big hospital or big organization, but it's still like a family. And, and so my family's part of it. When I was recruited for this position, they uh, insisted and required that they interview my wife as well. As a matter of fact, that's probably how I got the job, by the way, uh, because she did so well. But uh, it is, it's just, it's just part of who we are. Uh, how would you describe Hogue donors? Ho Hogue donors are extremely passionate. I mean, they love the place. They feel so good about it, and they, they want to keep it at the level it's at now, and in many cases enhance uh, what we're doing. So they're just very passionate. I, I've never been anywhere in, in this type of a position where the people were so close and so passionate to the institution. There's, there's a sense of pride that uh, the community owns Hogue. It, it, we don't own Hogue, it's really the community. And, the donors feel that sense of pride and that sense of ownership and they're just, they just, you know, similar to if they owned a home, they want to keep it nice, they, they want to, they own Hogue and they want to keep it up to what they feel it should be. So kind of expanding on that a little bit, why are they so important to Hogue? How, how have donors really played a part in Hogue? If you look even historically, donors have played, or I should just say the community has played a significant role in Hogue. 
that you look at uh, the technology that we have, you look at the beauty of the facilities. Hogue has been tremendously successful over the years and certainly could do a lot, even without the community support, but it wouldn't be the same. It ju you wouldn't have the facilities that we have today. You wouldn't have the, the nurses wouldn't be at the same level because we, the community supports enhanced education for the nurses and educational opportunities. The technology, um, I used to joke that when I uh, was uh, back at an academic institution, which is probably three times the size of Hogue, you know, we had one Da Vinci surgical robot. Where here we have, what, four? Maybe we have five with one to, to train on. And that's because the community wants that type of technology. They, they want uh, the most sophisticated equipment, they want the best service, and they are willing to, to support it to, to make sure that it happens. Does that answer the question? It does answer okay. the question, yeah. What is your hope for the ball this year? My hope, first of all, for the ball is that people come together and, and they, they feel good about Hogue and they feel good about being part of the Hogue family and, and just, just having fun with one another. In addition to that, my hope also is, is that, that we educate, we give people an opportunity to, to be advocates because although the community has been incredibly supportive going forward with the changes in health care, we're going to need additional support, and not necessarily additional support from just the people who are in the room. We need, to, we need to spread the word. We need to get more people involved, more community support. Uh, we've relied on some great donors over the years, and they're just they're wonderful and have been tremendously philanthropic and generous to Hogue, but we need to broaden that out. We need to broaden our circles, and, and that's what's going to keep Hogue as successful as it is, and even take it to that next level. What would you say to someone in attendance at the ball that evening who that night is their first exposure to Hogue? I would say because we don't do a lot of education at the ball, and, and that's on, on purpose, although we're, I know we're looking at ways to, to maybe enhance that. But I, I would say look, look around at the people you're, you're socializing with tonight. These are the, the type of people who love Hogue and have gotten involved in Hogue and have become very passionate about what we do at Hogue. And I, I, you, they're just high quality people. They're wonderful people, they're generous people, and it's just an opportunity for them to interact and socialize with, with some of the, the great uh, supporters of Hogue. So, so I think it, you know, when you're, when you're looking at getting involved with an organization, you certainly look to the people and who else is involved. And that's what I would tell them. Look around and see who's involved. This is what Hogue is all about. And these are the folks who've made Hogue successful. Great. And also, uh, may I sit down with you and, and would you like to consider a gift of? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but no, really, it is philanthropy. That, that It's the community support that, that is really the future of Hogue. And historically, it used to be that it was mostly around buildings and equipment. It's gone way beyond that now. You look at the, the nurses that we support and, and some of the positions that we support that we wouldn't be able to without community support. So, so the care that uh, the community receives from Hogue, there's a, a big part of that comes from philanthropic support. Perfect. Last thing, mm -hmm. a sign out, like Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Best Wishes, something like that. Oh, that's a... <laughs> I'm trying to think of uh, what would be a good one. I thought you were going to ask me what my favorite Christmas carol was and things like that. Well, I mean, I, I have that question, but no, you've been that's to okay. one? Two. No, not my Christmas carol ball, my favorite Christmas carol. Or oh, 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 <laughs> because that is a question. What's your favorite Christmas carol ball memory? But I'm oh, like, yeah, I've only been, I've been to, no, I've been to two. So this is, this, this is my, uh, my third one. So am I looking at the camera this time? Or? You look at me, it's fine. Look at, look at you. So let me think about this for just a moment. I, I, just, I just want to take a moment to wish everyone a, a happy and healthy, well, let me try that again. <laughs> I, I want to just take a moment to first of all say thank you. Thank you for your support and to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas and a happy and healthy New Year. Thank you. Thank you. Well, for Thanksgiving, we had dinner at my darling children's home, and uh, Jenny came way from New York just to do the turkey. 
and she did a wonderful job. She always does. The dressing is divine. Everything's divine. And we all ate until we thought we were going to drop <laughs> over. And uh, the dessert was so grand. And uh, we, we just spent a lot of times talking about old times and, and the, uh, the cheerfulness of, of Thanksgiving and the giving in our world is so, so important today. And when you get together as a family, you recognize that. And you look at somebody and say, oh, you need something? Yes, I do. I would like to have a, a new car. <laughs> well, that's kind of impossible. <laughs> but we do, we decide on our Christmas gifts. And so it's a charming, wonderful time. What's on your Christmas list this year? Oh, goodness. I have, I really haven't thought too much about it because, you know, my sister has been ill. And so Christmas has been something I'm looking forward to with great anticipation, but I haven't thought so much about gifts. Um, however, I'll take anything they want to give me. <laughs> you won't and turn anything away. I won't turn anything away. <laughs> That's very nice. Uh, what do the holidays mean to you? Well, they mean a lot to me. Um, my mother was died in childbirth. My father died at, when we were 12 years old. So we didn't have really great Christmases. But when I got married, then I made sure that we had great Christmases. I would serve maybe 35, 40 people dinner, and I had one person, one uncle, and I'm not going to say his name because he was still alive, that would take the turkey as it came out of the oven and strip the skin off of it. <laughs> and I'd say, you can't do that. That's the most beautiful part of the turkey. But anyway, we had, oh, we had such fun. It was, we had this whole couch just full of, of pictures of and of people sitting on the couch and enjoying themselves. Christmas is a very special, special time. Very nice. And do you spend Christmas here, or do you go to family's we, house? We spend Christmas here. Now, Mary Grace, my daughter, wants us to come back to Virginia this year, and we're thinking about it. It's quite a long trip, and of course, there's icy sometimes, but, but um, she has plans for us, and uh, we're going to take Maylene with us, as far as we know. So that'll be, that'll be an interesting thing to do. A little bit different. Like the adventure. It'll be an, <laughs> it will be an adventure. <laughs> um, tell me a little bit about what Hoag means to you. Oh, Hoag. When I first came to Newport Beach, I wanted to do something special. So I started out with the Children's Stetter Guild. Now, there are a lot of children that don't say or do anything until they get on the stage. And so they did that. Well, I we, I worked with Nancy Epson and Buddy Epson and, and uh, many, many, many of the noted that were here at that time. And then I sort of, well, you know, burned out on that. So I decided I'd go to Hogue. So I went to Hogue, and at that time, it was a small, small hospital. And so I said, um, well, I'd like to do anything you would want me to do. And they said, well, why don't you volunteer and sit at the desk? And I said, that sounds like fun. And so people would come in, and I'd say, you go down the hall, turn to the right, there's such and such's room. You go down the hall, turn to the left, there's such and such's room. We did, never had a map. We, we, we had the most divine cafeteria. Our wonderful lady, Winnie Bacon, was in charge of the hospital, the CEO at that, at that time. And she was a divine cook. And so she knew her menu and she, what she was going to serve. And she went down and personally supervised. Well, it became so good that we, Ben and I, would go down for dinner, at, like we're going out for dinner. And then we looked around, here were the police, and, and uh, all the different men and women that coming from such and such place for the dinner at Hogue. Now, if that wasn't exceptional, I'd like to know. <laughs> I wish you was back there now. That's funny. Mm -hmm. It's like when people think hospital food is so, so, so bad, horrible. And then like a restaurant. look forward to it. But I think the main thing that I, I feel about Hogue is the, the wonderful people that work there, the kind people, and the, the, um, uh, the, the givers. And they give every, every year, the donors are so wonderful. And Hogue has maintained its reputation. It's the most, well, I'm going to say in my blessing, not only is it the best hospital in the United States, but the best hospital in the world. That's my feeling. <laughs> How has Hogue changed over the years since that day that you walked in there to help with the front desk? Oh, gracious. I remember when they were going to build the tower, and we didn't have enough money at that time. So Ben and uh, um, I've forgotten which person went with him, but one of the other one, two, two volunteers, went to Chicago and borrowed some money for the tower. 
they came back and built that beautiful tower, and that was very the very beginning of the hospital's expansion. And then they used the helicopters to uh, on top of the roof, and um, my little grandson was born there. He was premature. It was only six months, and they rushed him to another hospital to talk. And uh, it's just, it, 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 that Hogue has meant so very much to me. I've had three babies born there, and I've been in there with my knees, and um, I had the most wonderful care. I just can't say enough about Hogue Hospital. People who don't know about Hogue who might be going to the ball for the first time that night, what would you want them to know about Hogue? I want them to know that it's the finest hospital, in my opinion, in the United, as I said, in the United States. And the care, the nurses, the doctors, the, the staff, everybody is on their, on their toes. When, when you want something, you have to ring a little bell or push a little bell and you get it. And my sister was just in there this last week, well, two weeks ago, and she was very, very ill. And they, they went in there and they held her hand and they even prayed for him, for her. And I thought, what a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful staff we have. And I know you're a part of it, and you're a part of it, and I thank you both for that. It's a good place to be. It's a good sure. place to be. That's for sure. What, um, tell me about the Christmas Carol Ball, the earliest Christmas Carol Ball you can remember. Tell me about that night. Oh, my goodness. They were always held at the Balboa Bay Club, and people looked forward to it because there wasn't any other thing here. I mean, that was the thing of the season. Now we have to share with the center and we share with this and that one. But that was so big. And Johnny Mercer was the one that used to, he never played the piano. He only knew this, the uh, treble cat left. He, he was, wasn't ever, 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 ever able to play a whole song. But his rhymes and the, and the things that he wrote, he told me, he said, I'm going to introduce the summer wind tonight. And it's going to be a classic. And Frank Sinatra is going to do it. And he did it, and of course it's been a classic. So we had people like him. We had John Wayne, who did the um, Solitary Life. We had, um, for, oh, he was a funny, funny, funny guy. And he did The Night Before Christmas. Andy Devine did The Night Before Christmas. And his gravelly voice, you know, The Night Before Christmas and all through the house. He was wonderful. And then we had the LA, they would bring their group down and Nancy Epson would direct at that and then we all sang together and I cannot tell you how many came over and used this piano and we, we, we practiced and they would all sit on this couch and we'd sing all the Christmas. It was, it was, a, it was a beautiful time in our lives. I, I can't even tell you how much fun we had. And um, this went on for years and years and years and we kept doing the same things, you know, and then eventually um, it changed a little bit and the Bay, Bay, Bay Club wasn't large enough. We had to get a bigger place. And so we went to a couple of hotels. I'm, I'm truly surprised that there hasn't been somebody who's built one big enough to have it right in Newport Beach. But I too think that will come in the future. Yeah, but though, the hotel but, is <laughs> trying, but. Oh, I know, yeah. I know. Well, I don't know why um, when they built the Islander Hotel, you, but you know, it's going to be bigger. You know, they're going to be able to accommodate about 500 people they in that just, new ballroom. They just debuted it uh, last week. Well, there you go. Yeah. Yes. So, so things are, are looking up now again. Oh, I just, I loved every ball. Vin and I would get out and uh, we'd do a waltz. We loved to waltz. And the, 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 the orchestra would say, a waltz? You mean you guys want a waltz? We want to play a rock and roll or something. And I said, nope, first you have to have the waltz. And so we would dance the waltz. And we felt very elegant doing that. But one time, he, we waltzed a little too hard. And he waltzed me back on the stage. And I ran my, my shoe, I had wore heels then, into my dress. And it tore a big hole in my dress. And I thought, well, I'm finished for the ball. So I went into the bathroom. And somebody brought me a whole bunch of safety pins. And I pinned it up so we could waltz some more. <laughs> Nothing will stand between nothing, you and the Nothing, nothing, nothing. <laughs> but George Hogue played a great part in those balls. He loved, he loved everything to do with Hogue, as you know. And he was so funny. He would, he would tell a joke, and it was, it was really, it was really funny. And then he'd tell another joke, and it was really not so funny. <laughs> and but Patty, uh, Hogue was always there with him. They were a charming couple. We enjoyed them very, very much, and we were very sad to lose them. 
but they, they did, as you know, a lot for Hogue Hospital. What would you say is your proudest accomplishment being involved with Hogue? My proudest accomplishment, goodness, that's very, very difficult. I think, I think the security of knowing that we have such a fine hospital and such fine doctors and fine nurses and fine staff and all those things mean so very much to me that maybe that gives me the most secure feeling I could ever have. You know, a lot of times you live, like my daughter has a plantation and she's removed from everything about hospital. I like the idea we're right in the center. We can go to Hogue in maybe five minutes. That's a, a, a big security for me at this age particularly. Mm -hmm. So yes, and but my security is just uh, knowing that there's always going to be a Hogue. There always will be one. So what is your ho uh, wish for Hogue for the future? Well, my goodness, my, all my wishes have come true. It's growing like crazy, as you know. And um, I just wish that it will continue to be a fine hospital, that it will continue to be a loving hospital, that it will be continue to be a praying hospital, and that it will continue to serve people the way they should be served. And I think that we're, we have a wonderful administrator who right now, our CEO, and a charming wife, and I think that uh, things are going very, very, very well. And it gives me a lot of security. Great. Um, let's see. Tell me, tell me one of your favorite just Hogue memories from, from the past. Today. Well. It could be anything. <laughs> My favorite memory, uh, that, there's so many, many, many favorite memories. I think Maybe the, the singing of the hymns were, were very, very important to me because I love to sing. And I love the hymns because they, they recognize really what Christmas is all about. And I think that's, that's very, very nice. But I was a sweetheart once of Hogue. <laughs> and I never have felt so, so loved in my life or so. It, it, was, it, was, like me, well, it was like being a sweetheart. <laughs> and uh, I, would, uh, I danced with, I think, everybody there. And, the, and it was such a fun, fun time, but, but uh, we, we don't have that anymore because it's just too much with, with the ball and the sweetheart ball. But I, that was a wonderful, wonderful experience in my life. How many people are sweethearts, even for one day? <laughs> so um, obviously, you know, Vin was a, a large part of Hogue oh, and very the much. history of Hogue. Um, what would you say to the people who are kind of the Vins of tomorrow, the ones that are just coming into Hogue and starting to put their names on buildings and really invest in Hogue. Yes. Um, what would you say to them? Well, I would say that they couldn't invest in anything any finer than Hogue because someday, maybe not today or tomorrow, but their family will use it. And, and that is the truth. We all end up someplace at a Hogue hospital and we get that wonderful, wonderful, wonderful care. And my, yes, Vin was very, very much, he loved that hospital. And um, he and Mike Stevens had the very cleanest job at Hogue. They'd take the laundry in to, to Los Angeles. They had a hospital that they were doing m laundry with. And, um, and, and I said, well, Vin, you have the cleanest job in, in Hogue Hospital. And they, they loved visiting and, and, uh, and doing this. That was a marvelous time of our growing. That's great. Mm -hmm. So the last thing I have is just to give us a uh, sign out, like Merry Christmas or Happy New Year or whatever you'd like to Christmas greeting to the people that are attending the ball. Well, Christmas greeting to one and all. You're not so little and you're not so small. You give money and donate the wonderful gifts. Oh, we're so grateful for all you give. Thank you, thank you for me. Thank you, thank you for Hogue, and thank you for our wonderful United States of America. God bless you all. Perfect, Nora. Thank you. <laughs>